Hi, if you're new here, welcome. I'm Yuri, dentist turned homeschool mom to five kids. We're in our eighth year of homeschooling and continuing in our series on homeschool curriculum choices for the upcoming school year. Today, I'll be sharing with you our math curriculum choices. Please stick around. I'm so, so thankful that you're here and so thankful for your time. If you're not subscribed already, we'd love for you to subscribe and join in our journey. On our channel, we share mainly about our passions and homeschooling. And I want to thank Davey from Calm in the Chaos Homeschool and Shauna from Homegrown Homeschool for hosting this collaboration about our math curriculum choices for the upcoming 2023 to 2024 school year. I always learn so much from these ladies, and I'm sure you will too. I have their channels linked down below in the description box. I also have the entire Math Curriculum Choices playlist linked down below, so make sure to check that out as well. For us, math has been the subject that has changed the least. So next school year, we'll be tackling 7th, 6th, 4th, and Kindergarten Math. Ooh. <laughs> we have used Singapore Math pretty much from the very beginning. And since it's been working, we haven't really tried anything new, it's even though I love to try new materials. Our kids do really well with Singapore math, and they're actually all pretty strong in math. But unfortunately, Singapore math doesn't go all the way through high school. So for a rising seventh grader, we have decided to try Saxon math so that she can transition into the high school years with a program that we know to be tried and true. Singapore math typically is about one grade level ahead of the students in the United States. And after looking into Saxon math and the levels, we have decided to start our oldest with the Saxon level 8-7, which focuses on pre-algebra. You can tell that even the sixth grade Singapore math is a little bit more challenging than the Saxon 8-7. And our daughter is the one who pointed that out. So we'll see how it goes. While Saxon math is considered spiral, which means that the concepts are spiral back and then visited again and again. And Singapore math is considered mastery, which is when you cover the same concepts in various and multiple ways before moving on. But Singapore math has a lot of spiraling elements because there's a lot of constant reviewing. Our kids can do math so much better than I could ever do, and they're actually faster than I am. So hopefully our daughter will appreciate and enjoy Saxon math, even though it is a lot more textbooky than Singapore math. So we will see how that goes. The rest of our school age children will be continuing with Singapore math. And Singapore math isn't all that colorful. So when we were starting out homeschooling, I was hoping to go with something more like Horizons math because it's very colorful and eye-catchy. But it turned out that it was actually more distracting having all the colors. The kids would actually enjoy being able to have the option of coloring the pages and the pictures. So it turned out to be a good thing that it wasn't colorful. I have one more resource that I want to mention, even though it's not really a curriculum, but I guess you can make it into a curriculum. It's called Bedtime Math. There are, I believe, two more of these in the series. We only own this particular one, but these cute books make math a fun part of everyday life in a practical way. For instance, your foot matches the length from your uh, elbow crease to your wrist and your head is about four to five times as wide as your eye. So kind of fun. And I like this part. They address three different age groups, your wee little ones, your little kids, and your big kids by asking some math-related questions. So I'm hoping to pick this back up again after not having looked at it for quite a few years. Oh yeah, and one more thing. We get so busy during the school year that we don't always have the time or energy to enjoy just being together and cooking together. So I'm hoping to be able to do more kitchen math by spending time together in the kitchen cooking. 
but we may actually end up doing that more in the summer because once the school year rolls around, it's just nonstop and busy. So hopefully that will work out. So those are our math choices for the upcoming school year. What are your math choices and what have you tried that you and your kids enjoy? I would love for you to share in the comments. Don't forget to check out the math playlist and Davian and Shauna's channels. And please help support our channel by liking and subscribing. That tells YouTube and me what sort of content you like. Have a great day and try to keep on smiling even when homeschooling gets hard. Hope to see you in the next video.